All right. So first I want to say welcome to everybody. This is our January, or sorry, February. Holy cow, I went backwards a month. Uh, the February 22, uh, uh, 2022 webinar series. Um, we are going to do something that's a little bit, um, I don't want to say different, but this is this definitely answers a couple questions and it opens up uh, a number of um, opportunities or options for people who may not have known about any of these functionalities that are in x lights as it pertains to uh, layout and organization and uh, so this video is is um, is not meant exclusively for brand new people um, it, it it's actually meant uh, to to talk about the organization that you have you, you have going on in your show now when you look at the long-term use of X lights uh, and being in this hobby it's just like being in, in any other hobby we, we tend to become collectors of things uh, one of those things might be a, a number of props or, or pixels or um, set up hardware or controllers or whatever it is and uh, one of the things specifically that Rob always yells at me about is uh, I like to hoard data um, and and sometimes there's a good reason for that and tonight's a very good reason as to why I'm very much into hoarding data and that's because I hate to lose something that I've already worked hard to create because as we know things in X lights take time to create and build or organize and once they're created you don't want to lose them so what you're looking at is um, kind of a, pers uh, a, a an idea of what my 20 19 layout was going to look like but it still had artifacts from my 2018 2017 layout in it and I was I, I don't know if anybody out there can relate to this or not but my guess is yes because I've seen enough others layouts uh, that as as um, I've been helping people and as Rob's helped people we have a tendency to not want to let go of specific things and hopefully tonight you can uh, learn a few things that will kind of help you let go of some of the props that maybe you're hanging on to and we want to give you some strategies and some advice that will take you into uh, a little bit more of a cleaner layout and so that I, I mean because I'll be honest this it can be stressful having all of this stuff on your layout and you don't know where it goes or where it came from or uh, what you're going to do with it and so I want to give you uh, a couple of good uh, steps, some some good information that you can use to get yourself organized, and and here's why. Uh, for a number of you that are three years in or, or more into the hobby, you already know uh, the more props and the more controllers you have, uh, the more things that you're going to try to do to your house. You're going to try to put larger display items out, uh, high high definition props, uh, uh, high pixel count props that that have come out since I want to say 2019 have been. Uh, in everybody's eye uh, I mean it's just one nice thing to really add to your show uh, but the the bigger that we make these props I mean another thing is like moving heads I mean how many people want to put moving heads in their show uh, so what happens as your layout continues to grow uh, well maybe your neighbors join in or what happens if your neighbors happen to move away like mine did my, my neighbors totally like they sold the house in December I couldn't put anything in their yard I had to I had to quickly change my layout just because I wasn't going to run anything over on their property. Um, so there's things that are going to happen as long as you're in this hobby. And uh, so maybe there's a couple things that we could do uh, just in general to help us uh, get things a little bit more organized. Now, the, the other thing is, too, is if you've been in this hobby long enough, and some of you can laugh, some of, some of you can laugh at this, but uh, your home storage begins to start uh, to fill up. Some of you may rent a storage facility. Others of us like to keep our stuff on our property. Uh, you might be looking to build a new storage shed for more of your Christmas stuff. Um, if you're a newer hobbyist, let me tell you, this is this is a struggle that we all face. And if you do become hooked on this hobby like the rest of us have or do or continue to, to do, um, these are some of the things that you'll face. So 
for the new people that are out there, this is what's coming for you if you are really hooked on to it the way that a lot of us uh, are already in the hobby. So tonight I have four goals. There's four things that I want to share with you um, in x that uh, that are, are specifically going to help you organize your models. Uh, I'm sure there's more, um, but to keep everything condensed, I want to keep this to a, uh, a reasonable time length. Uh, the first thing that we'll talk about is file organization and utilizing previous season layouts. Uh, another thing that we'll talk about is importing and exporting models. Sounds rather innocuous. Um, the, the third thing we're going to talk about is making, uh, making models active or inactive. Uh, it's, it's a lesser known option in x -Lights, but it's definitely helpful if you need that. Uh, and then the last thing we're going to talk about is creating and organizing layout previews. And that's something you really don't hear very much about, but um, it, it kind of dovetails with some of the other things that we've talked about in the past, and you'll see what I mean when we get there uh, with different topics. So uh, the first thing we'll get right into is file organization. So uh, I've already done a webinar on um, uh, organizing file structures in uh, x -Lights. Uh If you have multiple shows, you're running Halloween, Christmas, Easter, uh, 4th of July, you're, you're doing a bunch of different shows, Summer Rock Show. Uh, if, if you like to do different, uh, um, different kind of shows, usually you're not going to sit within one file structure. It's best, it, and I'll, I'll point to it uh, in, when, when the video goes on YouTube. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put up in the top left corner there, top right corner, I can't remember, and uh, there'll be a card up there that, that will point to that webinar specifically that goes more into detail about this. We're going to touch on some topics here. If you have any questions at the end of this, by all means, mention them in the comments down below or... Uh, uh, if you're listening today uh, and you're live in the Zoom room with us for the webinar, by all means, at the end we'll talk, we'll be able to discuss them. Um, so first thing, and, and we'll actually, I, I have screenshots, but we'll actually, I'll show you in Windows the, the same thing, so it's not as complicated. How can you organize your files? Well, the first thing I always recommend is using your backups. Now, uh, one of the things I've gotten very good at is at the end of the season, I delete every single backup out of my folder except for the last one. I will take a copy of my last backup for, let's say, example, 2021, and I will save that, I will copy that, and that last final back, backup captures all of my specific sequencing for any of the, the songs that I did for the year, and I will then put that backup copy into an archive layout folder. Uh, so on the screen here with my mouse, you can see there's an archive layout folder. Here's the backups folder. And I will take from the backup folder the last backup and I'll place it into my archive folder. Now, down below, here's my archive layouts folder. And all I do is I literally will create a new folder that says archive 2021 and you can see that I actually did this today this afternoon at roughly 12 20 p.m. so um, I'm a little behind but you know hey it's never too late to to get that back up in there but what's nice about having these archives is that over the years uh, you can see like I, for example I have archives of X lights version 3 which I probably will never ever go back and use and some of these may not be anything even remotely needed in the future. However, there may be some specific props that you've created over the years that you really don't want to use. And, and this webinar tonight will kind of serve as a purpose, not so much that you get to hold on to your data for longer, but whatever data you do have, you're, you're familiar with your options to be able to reuse those in the future. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, holding on to those legacy files, uh, which you may reference in the future, I think is rather important. So let's give you one of the pro tips that I can tell you from um, while we're on this business of kind of backing up your layout or creating uh, archive layouts, you know, so you can always go back and look at something you'd done in the past, gives you that option. I also create another folder, it's called layout planning. And down below, what you'll see is 
um, the 2018 layout demo. This was actually the layout that Rob kind of made up. He said, here, this is what you should do to your house for 2018. <clears throat> I, I didn't end up doing it exactly, but I came pretty close to doing what he, he suggested. I don't think I was able to do it until 2019, though. Um, and then I did the same thing for 2020, 2021, and, 20, and, and now I'm into this year. What I did was I created a folder, and I used my existing x lights rgb effects and my existing network file from my existing main x lights folder and i created what what you might consider a sandbox to go play in to uh, and this allowed me to not mess with my layout but still be able to go in and make changes and add things now why is this important well it, it's important because I can sit here and I can say, this is what I want my layout to look like. I want it to do this next year. I want it to be as clean and simple as set, uh, simple of a setup, if you consider this to be simple, that is. And it gives me a chance to play. It gives me a chance to have a little bit of fun and see what it would be like if I purchase some of these props. So that's the first thing. That's one of the biggest benefits is testing new props in your layout. How many people have said, did anybody get this? Well. How many people said, well, if I download the model and I throw it in my layout, I can play with it. I can, I can add this model to my existing groups. I can prepare uh, the submodels that I want to sequence. I can set up my controller con configuration. I can have all of that done. I can plan that out. Uh, I can I can open up my current sequences and if uh, you know it, it, we sequence our props in groups uh, and and um, very few things are done at the model level uh, in the in the PPD layout. But um, whenever you assign everything to their proper groups, you literally could open a sequence from last year that's already done. Hit the render button and boom, you get to see uh, how it already is going to look just with what you've done in the past. And I think that is something that is nice about planning, having having a planning folder or a sandbox that you can kind of test the water out with. So my plans here, the, my big plans are the uh, are the uh, arches, the, the fan arches from Boscoyo. I ordered three of them. Uh, they're coming in within the next uh, week or so. I just got the message from Boscoyo uh, that they'll be shipping those out. So uh, that's my one big addition. Uh, I have a couple other small things. And I've already taken the time and deleted off of the layout the things that are not going to be there next year. So I don't have many trees that next year, or this year, I should say. So those are gone. I took them out. But again, I'm not missing anything. And the reason why I'm not missing anything is because I've already taken this time to create the uh, my archive backups and as we go into the next few uh, rounds you can see I have these layouts I have last year's layouts my mini trees are in here so I don't have to worry about oh I lost my mini trees well what if I decide that I'm not going to do those arches and I don't have time or whatever no worries I can just rerun last year's stuff so life can happen if you run out of time you know the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions so just keep in mind that having a play out folder a planning folder is something that you may be interested in messing around with so the next thing that we're going to get into is import and export of models um, so when we talk about uh, exporting and importing an x lights model basically it's a function in x lights in the layout tab uh, it, it, this allows you to have a copy of the model that you've created uh, it, it fits your wiring diagram. It uh, has your submodels already created. Uh, you, it, it's, it's at a proper orientation on your layout. Uh, so it's nice that when you export them, when uh, you can always re-import them, the exact model that you were using, and, ex and know exactly how it's set up. Now, another thing about model exports is, is that they include or have the ability to include attachments to their model groups or their submodels. So when importing into a new layout, those groups will auto-populate. So let's say, let's say uh, you, you exported your, your uh, PPD wreath and you had like 10 submodel groups that were attached to that and you, you clicked those checkboxes for that export. What will happen is, is whenever you import that into, let's say, a new layout, it will create those, 
groups for you again without you having to do them and it will populate those submodels uh, into the proper groups that are that go with it so that's one important thing to remember whenever importing or exporting your models is that that new functionality has been added in uh, and and the other reason why you would want to do this is it's the easy way to share your model with other XLights users. Uh, one example of this would be um, if some if you've had the if you downloaded a model from a vendor or maybe somebody uh, gave you a model and it didn't work out very well, but you made it work and you made it work better. You didn't have to splice pixels in or you didn't have to do something. And, and now you've got this chance to share your model with another XLights user and it, you, you, you help them along this journey that they're going on. So that's something that's always nice to, to be able to do. So, um, with that, there are two types of model exports inside XLights. Uh, as you can see here, the, there is an export as XLights model. Looking at the screen, the highlight blue says XLights model. And what that is referred to is the native XLights model was used to create that prop. And because of that, XLights can remember the functionality and it can export it as a 360 degree tree it could export it as a 180 tree it could export it as a flat tree however you have the settings for that mega tree we'll say or that star or the arches or um uh it had it had it for the sphere or something like that it can export it as that x lights model uh and it's native and the other option, though, is you can export it as a custom XLights model. Now, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to throw up another card up here so that you can click on the link here. There's more on custom XLights models. There's some very interesting ways that you can uh, individually uh, address different strand counts or pixel counts per strand on outputs for controllers. It's a very, very niche thing. But if you need to be able to tell a prop uh, I want 200 pixels on one output and 500 pixels on the second output and 300 pixels on the third output. You would do that using a custom model, and this is the way to create it. If you're using uh, the mega tree, for example, or you're using a matrix, you can customize those outputs. So both of these functions are rather helpful and useful um, whenever you're exporting models. Uh, if a custom model is selected, and in, in the previous example, we had a mega tree selected, which is a native XLights model. Now, in this example, we have a PPD wreath, which is a full custom model. And you can tell that by looking at the layout screen, and you see the custom model icon beside the prop. Whenever you right-click on this model, you're only going to have one selection that you can make which is export XLights model, it won't say export as custom. It won't say it. But it still is custom. It's not, there's no native PPD wreath XLights model, although it'd be nice if there was. This, uh, this, this model is a custom model, and therefore it will export as an XLights model in the form of custom. Uh, so model imports. Model imports are something that many people are familiar with. Uh, again, in the other video, I have uh, shown how to do model imports. Model imports are rather simple. If you have purchased a uh, uh, one of the uh, models from uh, Boscoya Studios, a Snowflake or the PPD Wreath or anything, uh, most everything on his website is in the model downloads, which is this giant arrow on the right. Uh, you can easily bring any of those models into your show using that arrow. However, if you're doing a, a model that you've already exported outside of your layout, this is how you're going to bring them in to your layout if you're using a different layout or you're coming from a different layout. Um, you use the import function. And so uh, some examples of models that you might be using are uh, the PPD certified models. Uh, there's a link up above here for PPD certified models. What that is is we went through and we created a bunch of uh, submodel groups and allow you to be able to easily map different uh, uh, PPD sequences easily to your downloaded models that have uh, submodels and it adds the sequencing in whenever you map sequences and click the auto map button. So it's real easy. So that's one thing. If you if you share models, obviously this is how you bring them in. If somebody shared a model with you or you shared a model with somebody else, you'll use the import function. And also, um, 
uh, the vendor modify models. So, uh, however, if it doesn't bring the model back in, uh, or if, if you do if you do download or bring a model in through the import or the download, it doesn't size-wise create the model the exact same size that it exported as. That's not uh, the availability or the, the functionality of the model imports or the model exports. Uh, but we will have some options later on that kind of show you that. So uh, there is one more way that you can import into XLites from uh, uh, it, it, any model from XLite. So uh, we can use this function that's called import previews models and groups. And basically you just click inside your layout, you right click, uh, you, you don't have to have anything selected and, and I know in the screenshot I have it, but you can right click and you can use this functionality of import previews models and groups. Uh, you right click from the layout tab and you select that. Uh, at this point, um, at this point, you, you, you just point to any folder that you have your uh, legacy props set up in. You can easily select anything from them and bring it in and place it, and it's very, very simple. And so with that, that's going to be one of the first things that I demo here. So I think I am in, let me, let me go ahead and change this to desktops. And X lights, and it doesn't matter because um, we'll just go into this one. Doesn't doesn't matter which layout because we're just using. Well, there's the bellflower. There is the ice queen snowflakes. So if I were were wanting to go into um, my old layout and I wanted to easily import a model uh, from one of my um, from one of my uh, archive layouts let's let's go into here and click on um, I don't know 2018 something from 2018 and and I'm just going into the folder and here's my RGB effects file basically anything that was listed in my layout I can add in let's see um, let's go we'll just pull in an arch so right now XLights is saying, hey, you've got an issue, couldn't start uh, calculate a start channel for a model. It's telling you, hey, here's your arch. This arch was from, you know, 19 or 2018 or whatever, and it's set up. It knows that it's looking for this controller, but I can come in here quickly and obviously I can assign it to a controller. I can chain it to the end of a model if I choose to, however it is that I need to begin to assign that model. So this is rather easy to bring in any kind of your specialty props. Uh, I'll, I'll even do a specialty prop. Let's, let's go find something that I actually put a little bit of time into. Um, Reindeer. I put a lot of time into these things. This was a cut. This was a custom model, and I did it from a picture background. And it's it's a uh, dumb RGB model, or no, it's not. It's a AC model, I believe. String properties. It's a single color white AC prop. So what's nice is is I don't ever have to hold on to my reindeer. Um, it's all saved in a layout somewhere, and to bring it in. I can easily bring it in. So there's that functionality added into XLite. It's rather easy to um, uh, utilize that, and that's why it might be important for you to save some of your old layouts. So the next thing we're going to roll along into is active and in inactive models. Um, active and inactive function in XLites is available whenever you click on a group of models or on an individual model. And all you have to do to do this is to right click and uh, select a model or a group. You can then right click and you can bulk edit and you can see over here active or inactive. Um, selecting inactive will set uh, props or groups to inactive. Props are uh, still listed in the model window or the model list, but if you're trying to hide these models, if you're trying to get rid of or completely remove these models from your model list, this isn't helpful for you. Um, so 
in some cases, this is where deleting a model and relying on the ability to import from your old layout is important uh, because there is no way to hide a model from a list. Uh, and then the other thing is, is selecting active. If you, if you des decide to take a model that is inactive, you can then select it, make it active. And as soon as you do, it brings it up. So here are um, two, ex here's an example of an inactive model. You can tell that the model is inactive because you have a greater than, less than sign uh, surrounding the uh, models. Uh, that you've selected. So as you can see here, there is magically no uh, pixel trees sitting here in the screen that you can see. These are mini trees down here. But uh, the prop is then not shown, but it's still shown in the list. But as soon as, you, if you make them inactive, this is how it will look. If you make them active, now you can see that down, well, down here you can't see any of the uh, parentheses, the, the, the greater than or less than, but now you see that these uh, trees have appeared and they are standing there, um, but they show up like normal whenever you activate them. So again, this works on uh, both single models and groups, all, although the groups don't show the less than, greater than sign. Um, so, and again, uh, I highly recommend that if you want a model to not show up specifically in this list, you may need to delete it. But there is one more uh, way that before you delete it that you may find helpful, and we'll go ahead and get into that in creating previews. And previews is uh, found in the layout tab. Now, um, if you open up XLights and you have the Layout tab set up, this, this preview drop-down menu was very, very useful prior to the addition of 3D uh, that was added into XLights. And the reason why this was helpful is because it allowed you to place one preview of your house, let's say the left side of your house, in one screen. And then you could place the front preview of your house on another screen. And then you could create a, another preview of the right side of your house, for example. So if you lived on a corner lot or you had a really big lot, you could create different previews for your effects to go over. Um, this did uh, allow you to have multiple sides to view, but it was really clunky to sequence. It, it can be clunky to sequence whenever you have three different views. So the addition of uh, 3D uh, in X lights and the ability to zoom in and zoom out of the layout tab really helped kind of uh, make it easier for you to program the entire layout. Uh, but if you're looking to remove models, this is one way that you can get those models off of the list and put them in a different area. So what what you can do is to create a new preview, all you have to do is click on the preview drop downs and select create new previews and bam, you can just create yourself a brand new preview, which we'll do here in a, in a little bit. Um, in the preview, also there's preview settings for every model. Now this doesn't work for groups, but it does work for models. So you just select any model, click on the model preview setting, and you can select any preview that you want that model to specifically go to. Now, for example, this is a singing monster face. I, it was in my Christmas layout, but I didn't need it for my Christmas layout. I need it for my Halloween layout. So I could put it on the Halloween page. Um, there, it gets a little bit more complicated with having Halloween and Christmas in one layout because of controller counts and outputs and such. Uh, so I have another video on that. If you'd like to follow along with that, I'll add that card up above in YouTube here. Um, so, but the preview settings uh, are definitely helpful for you to organize your props to get them off of this models list on the main default. So there are a couple of notes on previews. So first of all, props assigned to a specific unique preview, let's call it Halloween, will not be displayed in the default preview. This is, if this is what you're looking for, then great. Just put it in the uh, put it in a different preview, it won't show up. It won't appear on your model list. This is, might be what you're looking for. Only props assigned to the default preview will... Uh, oh, oh, I even I mistyped. 
only props assigned to the default preview will appear in the 3D layout. So if you don't want something to show up in the 3D layout, put it in a different preview. That will take it away. Clicking on 3D will only show default preview props. Uh, move specific props to the 3D that you wish uh, uh, to move, the, move your props to a default preview. And that way, whenever you do preview in 3D, you'll be able to see those props in action with sequencing. Um, props can also be sequenced on the Sequence tab, no matter what preview they're assigned to. So if you have, you have a left side, a middle, and a right side preview, you can sequence any one of those previews. It's not dependent. You just need to go into uh, model. Uh, you have to go into... Um, uh what is the what's the name of that thing it's right here ha huh. display elements couldn't spit it out uh you have to go into display elements and add it in you can create uh display element previews for different previews on their own with those models only so that's another way to think about it uh and then finally props assigned to a different preview will still share the controller network assignments so just because you've moved something from the Christmas layout into the Halloween layout doesn't mean that they're still not talking to the network tab or the controller tab in x -Lights. That means that you can't overlap uh, outputs with one model versus another model. Uh, and if you do, x is going to yell at you uh, whenever you do a check sequence. So there, there's a couple things specific there uh, whenever it comes to... Um, uh, to notes in X, uh, uh, dealing with it in X lights. So uh, I want to go ahead and I want to share with you um, uh, some of the ideas of setting in previews. So if you want to create a new preview, all you have to do is come up here in the layout tab and just click on create new preview. And we can call this uh, AC props, right? And so what x -Lights did was it created this AC props preview, but it made everything else go away. Well, there's, there's nothing else in the AC props list until we go back to our default, which only works in 3D, and we select a model, and we say, I'm going to take this and put this from this preview. I'm going to put this into my AC props. So n notice that the, um, that the reindeer is gone. And that model now only exists in the AC props group. Now, if you want to see all of your models, there is a function here that opens up all your models. You can see all your models. Uh, this may become a hodgepodge, and things will overlap. It, it won't look pretty uh, if you've got things just, you know, thrown haphazardly on top of each other. It'll just show. But, but if you go back to default, the, the reindeer's gone. If you go back to AC props, there's the reindeer and the others are gone. So this is kind of nice functionality if you need it to just disappear and go away off of the list. I'll, I'll, or you're planning, on, you're planning on using it, but you don't know for sure. This is one way that if you just take the time and you go in and you say, oh, I'm not using these arches this year. My neighbor isn't going to run this display. Uh, let me go and set this to um, the 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 other preview that's the functionality that that's built into x lights to help you create those um to create those previews to move things out of your way to help you organize your layout um a couple final notes um having uh your files organized uh, as i said earlier uh can help relieve the need to hold on to unused props in your layout uh as an example I brought up a preview screen of, of my 2018-2019 layout and how kind of a mess it was. Um, sometimes it's easier just to create that sandbox uh, and, 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 and delete all the props that you don't think you're going to use. Because if you have this, um, this legacy folder that you've already set up, you haven't lost anything. Uh, you can always import and export models in a way to save the model groups that are associated with them, uh, as well as the wiring orientation. So you never have to lose it. Again, you're not losing anything. You're just finding a way to make x -Lights work for you and organize around it. And the last, uh, the last note that I have for you tonight is um, 
Active and inactive models can be, it can help you declutter your preview screen, but inactive models definitely remain in the default preview list. You, you can also use views to help you organize those models that you wish to, let's say, inactivate or make them disappear off of your list. So one, one will only let you delete off of, uh, will not show on your list that's the inactive and active will still show on your list but to sh not show on your list you'll use views to help you with that so uh, with that uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up if anybody has any questions uh, there there's a lot in this there's a lot of um, uh, different information I don't think that we've ever uh, talked about in this, this section. So if you have questions, by all means, feel free to unmute and go ahead.